hosts on this fabulous Friday morning, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. It is fabulous. A wonderful day. You know, next week at this time, we get a Friday the 13th in October, which is the appropriate month for it, I think. Really will. Yeah, I'm looking right. forward to that. Will Mike Hake come in so we can see him all dressed up in his costume? Of course, Mike looks the same every day. <laughs> Dude's just back from Italy and already you're working on him? I was expecting Two, a response. He's slow three weeks. Today. He's slow. Normally when I say that, he's all over me. He jumps that with both feet, but oh, he, he was... It's been three I'm wondering, nice today. I'm wondering if that's the day I die. I mean, it's... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Friday the 13th in October. Bill's been talking about my demise for weeks now. Yes, I mean, but literary, 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 not not real. Yeah, he's been he's been uh, pushing Gilstrap to get you into the grave there yeah. in his book. But now, yeah. but Gilstrap's turning the tables on me. It's appearing that Gilstrap's going to make a hero out of Mike Height. Michael Height was always a hero, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> just needed to be developed. The storyline had to and, be arced. And, and told to the public. The real story has been hidden all these That's years. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this is a, a special day uh, for Mike Height. He doesn't know it yet, but we're going to let him know that in about a half of an hour when we do the intros. Uh-oh. He has no idea that this is his day, but it is. But welcome back, Mike Height. Well, well thank you. Thank you, Bill. Back from the uh, the lovely country of Italy. Oh, and a lovely country it was. Uh, we did uh, Rome, Venice, Florence, Pisa, Luca. Um, all of it was fabulous. I'm glad you had a good time. I did. Um, we would go back in a heartbeat. Beautiful. Are they still talking about uh, charging admission to, to Venice itself as a whole, a whole town? Uh, yeah, I, th I think they're talking about it. I don't know if they've it actually done it yet. It yet. Um, but, you know, it was it's sort of odd because when we, we first started planning this trip, um, you know, we weren't sure we were going to have enough time to go all these places and, and spend enough time in each one. And, and I, you know, I told the rest of my party, I said, you know, if we have to cut something out, cut out Venice. I said, I, I'm not really – I want to see Rome really bad. I really want to see uh, Pisa and Florence. Um, so if we have to cut something, cut Venice. Venice was by far yeah. my favorite location once we got over there and, and, and did it. You know, sitting in, in San Marcos Square um, in the evening, um, it was just fabulous. Awesome. So I loved it. That's great. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Welcome back. Thank you. Our guest in this segment is Steve Pearson. Steve's helped us out on the program before, and uh, especially with uh, candidate forums that we've done in the past, his knowledge of Jefferson County unsurpassed as he is the publisher of the West Virginia Independent Observer. I have a couple of those uh, issues in my hand here that Steve uh, brought in. Steve, good morning. Welcome in. Good morning, and thanks for having me, guys. Uh, you know, you, you uh, texted me on the way in just to make sure I, I was coming, whether I was going to be on the phone or in person. I was like, you know, <clears throat> I got to be in person. I mean, who would want to miss being in a padded room with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> a padded room is operative word. It didn't start out padded. That was by prescription. <laughs> and then later, a court order. <laughs> but here we are, nevertheless. A good call it was. <laughs> and the door is locked from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, later on, we're locking from the inside. And we're coming up on Friday the 13th. Yeah, and just had that Halloween. So there's all the reasons to keep that door locked. Keep trivia, us in. Uh, trivia question. What is the uh, official name? for the fear of Friday the 13th? Uh, Steve? Triscodecophobia. Boom. There you go. That's why we have Steve on today. He so. knows the answers, and that's yeah. why he's going to be uh, with us in this next half hour, too. Steve, as we get into the serious subject of Jefferson County politics, which has been in, uh, is turmoil the right word now when we look at the Jefferson County Commission? I think uh, turmoil is a uh, confusion. You know, you can pick your adjective, but you know, normal, uh, get the business, uh, you know, regular, those are not words you would use uh, mm -hmm. for the Jefferson County Commission right now. Um, if you want to do a quick recap. Yeah, if you could, catch us all um, up as to what the issues are here. Yeah, so the Jefferson County Commission has uh, five members, um, like, like Berkeley, uh, but those are the only two counties in, in West Virginia that, that have, have five members. Most of them have three. Um, back in May, one of the... Uh, commissioners who was newly elected. Uh, she had been appointed, uh, ran for election, got elected, uh, serving a, a full six-year term. Uh, her family, for family reasons, she was moving out of the county, so she resigned, um, which necessitated filling uh, that seat. Claire Ath, who's it's been Claire a guest Ath. on this show. Mm -hmm, yes. 
And the commission solicited uh, candidates. Uh, we had about, I think it was eight or nine, ten. Some people put their names in and then took them back. But they had a very good uh, slate of uh, people to choose from. Um, they, these candidates came in. They interviewed. Uh, this was in June. It was a 2-2 vote. They, you know, the, the commission had settled on uh, two commissioners wanted one candidate. Two other commissioners wanted uh, another candidate. I presume it was Tab and Stolifer on one Stolifer, side. Tab and Stolifer selected one candidate uh, who was, at that time, he was the uh, head of the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. Um, who was he? Um, um, Stolifer. No, no. no, no. Um, it's okay. We'll come you, back. You do this to me, yeah, you know, yeah. Bill. I mean, you know, you're you're, you're trying to you know make me look old. Uh, <laughs> Bill, Bill needs someone else to I join. Need a, I need company, Steve. I need company. <laughs> All right, um, but you know, there's a lot of names here. So, but you yeah. know, essentially, you know, they they and they they talked a little bit. Well, would you change your vote? No, they were pretty set that these were the two candidates. You know, t- t- two sides. So it was just Krause and and uh, Jackson. Jackson on one yeah. side, and and Stolfer and Tab. You know, didn't want to you know compromise. Um, so by state code, you know, there's actually provisions, you know, that the legislature has thought through this process. Well, if you have, uh, you know, commissioners and they lose one, how do you go through this? There's, fall, there's various fallbacks. Um, they kicked it to the Jefferson County uh, Republican Executive Committee because uh, Ath was a Republican. Um, they went through a very public process. They solicited names. They had and they they had interviews, and they had eventually, I think it was about nine candidates uh, that they vetted, uh, interviewed, and in August they met, they came up with a list of three through a process that I think Commissioner Stolifer described. He actually sits on the, the commission. I, he, you know, I wasn't there. He can describe that. Um, and they submitted those to the Jefferson County Commission in early August. And that triggered the second uh, provision, which is within 15 days the county commission had to act on that list. So they had a meeting scheduled for August 17th. Um, and it was on the agenda, uh, working through the agenda. They got to that part of the agenda, and uh, one of the, co- the uh, Commissioner Krause said, well, I don't feel that this list was, uh, is a legally uh, list. It, it didn't, uh, one of the candidates uh, is not um, uh, qualified to serve, and I'm, I'm not going to participate in this vote. And there was a back and forth. And what, what was that basis on? What, why weren't they eligible? Um, well, again, so... The state code just says they have to be Republicans and they have to live in Jefferson County. Uh, they're in Repo- a Republican or, or the same party as the candidate that's sure. been replaced. But does not have to be in the same Same district. district does but there's not no have other to. provisions. And the, uh, the Republican Executive Committee, being a political organization, it has a specific task. It looked to the code, it did its task. Um, the, her com- issue was that the, one of the candidates on this list uh, had some uh, works for a nonprofit that gets funding from the county. Keith Lowry, Keith I think Lowry, is the name right? Of the question, um, right? And Jefferson Community Ministries. Now, but that money had already been appropriated for the current fiscal year. Mm-hmm. So what we're, we're talking about was a hypothetical future uh, conflict. Okay, so at the time that he would put on the list, there was no conflict okay so it's kind of like you know you, you can't you can come up with lots of different future you know actions that might happen that might create a conflict but not a conflict at the time um so at the time you know there was a little back and forth uh what the commissioner Stolfer, who was the president of the commission uh decided to do was to defer that and uh keith lowry on his own initiative went to the uh, state of west virginia ethics commission to ask them, what do you think about this? And they came back with a rather lengthy uh, uh, opinion, said, well, potentially, but um, you would have to recuse yourself under certain conditions. But, you know, right now, there is not a, uh, a conflict. Um, so what that then did, it set it up, though. So the next meeting was um, uh, September 7th, after, after the August meeting. So it was on the agenda, but the uh, Ethics Commission hadn't uh, given its opinion by then, so they didn't take any action on it. So that rolled it forward to uh, September 21, mm-hmm. but, and it was back on the agenda as the first item. But by that time, so, so the, the, the code is very specific. It says um, the commission had to, had to vote within 15 days of receiving the list from the Republican Executive Committee. So... 
they were just inside that window on August 17th. I think the, the list came over on the 5th officially. Um, so by September uh, 21st, they were outside that window, so they couldn't vote. You know, then they had, to, they had to roll to the next provision of the code. Like I said, the, the legislators put a lot of different fail-safes into this, um, which was there's three names on the list. The most senior uh, commissioner in terms of tenure, which would have been Jane Tabb, she was elected you know, several terms ago, would get to strike a name. Then the next most senior commissioner would strike a name, and the third uh, person would be on by, by default. And uh, so no vote was, was, was able to be taken, but it was on the agenda to go through that process. But there's not been a meeting uh, for September 21st. Uh, and there was not a meet. There was a regularly scheduled meeting uh, yesterday. There was a special uh, meeting a week ago. None of those meetings took place because two of the commissioners declined to, uh, to attend, mm -hmm. uh, which left the commission with only two people, which doesn't constitute what they call a quorum. They need at least three people to conduct official business. So that's so it's been about a month since the county commission has had a uh, a meeting to conduct its business and there seems to be a hardening of the uh, uh, positions as you uh, Steve Stolifer uh, president of the commission was on I think on Wednesday on your show mm -hmm. and you know he outlined you know he's looking at this and saying well he, he, the commission is required uh, to do this I think he said you know the word is shall in in, in that thing so as the president of the commission, he's legally obligated to, you know, fill this seat. Uh, he can't just say, hmm, okay, uh, you know, won't do it. That's his position. Um, Commissioner Krause and Jackson are, uh, are saying that, well, we're not going to show up. Uh, we should just leave this seat vacant. And the way forward is just to stop trying to fill the seat, and we'll do all the other business of the county, but with four members. So... Um, you know, this kind of gets back to why, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, when, when you're sitting in, in, in the room, uh, aside from the fact that, like, oh, I've never seen this happen before, you start to, well, why is this happening? And so the initial justification for um, why they, uh, they didn't want to come to the meeting was uh, not to f not fill the vacancy, but because the um, president, Mr. Stolifer, was abusing his authority to set the agenda for the meeting. And part of it had to do with, uh, I think there were, when I looked into it, there were three different um, items that had been not included in the agenda. Uh, one of which was related to uh, ambulances on the mountain, which is a, a, a perennial topic of discussion uh, going back several years with the reorganization of the emergency medical si uh, services system. And, and it's been discussed, uh, it's been handled uh, by the, uh, the director you know, he's, he's got a regular uh, section on the agenda where he updates on this. It's been a topic. There's been requests to, to um, put ambulances there. There's been requests to put ambulances elsewhere to reorganize it. And it, it comes back down to money. You know, I mean, his, uh, Mike Sign, he's the director, uh, Captain Mike Sign of the uh, Emergency Services Agency. Um, he's made it pretty clear that if you, if the county wants to put more ambulances in, in, in additional stations, um, you either are reducing services, you know, in the area where the demand is heavy, or you need to, you know, fund me to hire, you know, more staff so I can expand. And I think he's, he's been consistently saying, well, you know, we, I would need to put, I would like to put ambulances and staff here and staff here. It's not just ambulance. It's really, it's crews, you know, and you need, you know, multiple shifts to run, you know, one ambulance station. So it's not just a matter of getting two guys or, you know, two, two, uh, two people and putting them there. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a financial thing. And, but that, you know, that is in the purview of the commission. Mm -hmm. You know, to, if, if, they need, if they want this service, then they need to fund it and they need to figure out how to, you know, support it. Uh, but those discussions haven't been taking place. It's just been the same, well, we need to put this here. But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, well, I, I, you know, you're going to your dad and say, I want a bigger allowance. Well, why? Because I need a bigger allowance. Why? Well, I want a bigger allowance. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really go anywhere. You've got to justify. got to justify. Right. Or, and now you said there were two other issues as well. Well, and the, the other two issues, um, one of which related to the, you know, the, the policy for putting things on the agenda. And the other one was related to the um, um, solar um, or zoning ordinance related mm -hmm. to solar. And typically, those types of issues would go through 
the county administrator, and she would work with the you know the uh, county's legal attorney, who was the assist deputy uh, uh, prosecuting attorney, to make sure that whatever they're doing is compliant with state law and state code. Uh, you know, because you know it's, we're a Dillon rural state, you, you know the county commission can't just sort of you know enact stuff that it wants to. It has to actually reflect what the state you know uh, legislature uh, allows it to do. And so you know that's the typical process as you go through and. Like any organization, you make sure your, your staff reviews it, you know, legal reviews, you know, HR, whatever it is, and then you bring it to the commission. And the commission, you know, whether it has public hearings, you know, discussions, workshops, it, it, it votes on it. Um, so it's my understanding that that's really why these things didn't get on the agenda. Now, uh, Kraus yesterday, after they uh, again did not attend a meeting, uh, s published a um, letter and was mailed to all the other commissioners and uh, a couple other people who would be on the list when you have to address commissioners. It says, it's clear the commission is at an impasse. I've already articulated the reasons I don't believe it's appropriate to move forward with a vote on the vacant Charlestown commission seat at this time. In addition to my other concerns, it's now apparent that the JCREC violated its own bylaws, Article 6, Section E, Subsection 3, by choosing the slate of candidates by secret ballot rather than voice a vote. In other words, the list provided to the commission by the JCREC is not legitimate. Continuing to call special meetings, you know, won't occur is not a solution. And then she provoked her solution is that this be taken off the agenda. They can meet, take care of county business and deal with this at a later time. Mike, you're on the Berkeley County Republican Executive Committee. Is this a legitimate complaint about how the <coughs> candidates were put forward that it was uh, done uh, instead of uh, by secret ballot rather than a voice vote? Well, I don't know. I'd have to look at their uh, particular bylaws um, and, and see what it actually says. I, I don't – there's nothing – when I was in the executive committee in Berkeley County that there was nothing that prevented us from doing a secret ballot when we were, you know, taking some votes. Some votes we did um, by secret ballot and some votes we did by voice. It was just, you know – it depends on what the bylaws say and what the bylaws allow. She may have a legitimate argument. I, I don't know. Um, but it seems, whatever the case is, it seems like the their executive committee went through a process to select three names. Whatever that process was, they went through a process to select three names, and that was what they were supposed to do. And they submitted the three names. So at this point, it's, it's about coming in and doing your job and voting on the three names. I don't understand why elected officials um, feel it's okay not to show up and do their job, whatever it is. You know, you, you may not agree with the process, but as long as the process is being done by code, then you need to show up. And even if it's not, you need to show up and voice your opinion then that, hey, we're not doing this right and get it on record. And and these two individuals aren't doing either one. Steve? Yeah, and I think uh, 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 Mr. Gilstrand, who was on when we were on the conversation mm -hmm. on Wednesday, you know, he asked a question about, you know, did this, is this stuff happening in, in, in back rooms, you know, was, you know in, in the quiet? And really, it's, 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 it's an issue of what's happening in the front room. And I think what, what this conversation you talk about, it's a focus on small procedural issues. And, and not the bigger issue here. And the bigger issue here is, you know, it's your county commission, you represent 60,000 people in Jefferson County. Uh, they're elected by, uh, by district, but they represent everybody in the county um, as a public official. And, you know, they're supposed to meet, you know, according to their, their schedule. Um, and if there's minor procedural issues, well, then they need to be raised and uh, adjudicated. And you can always take it to court. You know, there's, there's lots of different options to, you know, address these things. And it, it ties back a little bit to what's been happening because it, this goes back um, even to, you know, the prior iteration of the commission with the, with the EMS. There's been a little bit of a, you know, we'll put things on the agenda, but they're not really well described. So if you remember when the EMS uh, came up, it was a special meeting and it was described of discussion and possible action related to uh, um, uh, emergency services in Jefferson County. It, it didn't really capture the flavor of we want to buy all of the ambulances from the volunteer fire companies and, and abolish the uh, ESA board and, and bring it into the county. I mean, it was a very little, very terse. Um, yeah, and, and that's a political thing, but 
in the spirit of you know public meetings and, and openness, it was a little bit you know on on the QT. Steve, excuse me. Yeah. Where do you see we go from here? Or well, I was just say, but, okay. but, so, but more recently, what happened on uh, it was uh, September seventh. Uh, one of the I tell you one of the agenda items was to discuss the solar uh, uh, issue, and. Ms. Commissioner Kraus used a procedural method. There was a, a, on, the, on the agenda, there's a regular recurring item for uh, legal review. The, the, the county uh, deputy uh, attorney provides uh, updates on all the, the lawsuits that happen against the county. And what, there's a lawsuit currently on one of the um, solar farms. And uh, during that meeting, you know, she said, well, I want to bring up something about this. And uh, Commissioner Stolfer has made a habit to recuse himself from that. So there was a back and forth about what it was about. She wouldn't say, uh, but he agreed to leave the room. So then there were three commissioners there. Uh, and without missing a beat, Commissioner Jackson then nominated Commissioner Krause to be the presiding officer because Mr. Krause, uh, Stolford left the room. She immediately put a motion on the floor to repeal uh, a portion of the zoning ordinance. And uh, uh, Nathan Cochran, who's the uh, attorney, uh, tried to interject. And I think her quote was, I didn't ask you, um, and called the vote, vote passed two to one to repeal this section of the amendment, of the, of the zoning ordinance. So no public notice, you know, no, no discussion. So again, it was happened in the front room, but it was a manipulation of, you know, the procedural processes to achieve a, a specific outcome that didn't necessarily, you know, uh, get the benefit of public uh, public notice or public vote. And so that, that issue is currently in limbo because it's never been done before where um, you know, the zoning ordinance has a very specific process for uh, amendment and this didn't follow it. And um, so this is typical of, of what we're seeing and, here. And that, is, that, that would bother me um, greatly that if, if somebody were, uh, one of the county commissioners had a, a um, council interject and would not listen to council especially on a procedural issue like that um that they didn't want to hear council's um council yes um to to say hey maybe we can't do it this is why it's very important whether it's the the executive committee or the commission itself to have a strong parliamentarian in the room to say that we are doing things correctly or to raise objections when we're not and it's it's incumbent upon whoever's running the meeting to listen to that parliamentarian and make sure that way you don't have people coming back in the future saying you did something illegal and now it doesn't hold up so I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm disturbed about well, what I'm hearing. That has been disturbing, and you know, and it's it's disturbing from a legal sense, but it's also it's it's frightening from the financial implications because one of the things that you look to your lawyer to do is, don't let me do expensive mistakes. Right. Uh, you know, and when you're a, a, a government body, and you know, particularly when, when zoning, I mean, zoning recognizes property rights. So when someone has a property right, and then you take it away, you know, that's a taking, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, the Fourth Amendment. And so you've taken this stuff away and, you know, you now open yourself up for damages and litigation. And uh, so the, the, during a planning commission meeting last week, the, Nathan advised the planning commission that he's heard, you know, he's been advised that the, there's four companies that are currently building and in the process of building solar installations that they're contemplating significant litigation. So th this has financial implications, uh, you know, of a staggering uh, amount for, for the county. Can commissioners be held individually responsible for actions that would create a lawsuit? Uh, you know, I, uh, I would turn to counsel and ask that question. <laughs> That's above my pay grade uh, for, for that. By the way, Dee Kersey from the Secretary of State's office will join us Wednesday uh, next week at 9.05 to answer some of these kind of questions. Uh, we're going to go over by a few minutes in this segment, Steve. Hope you don't have anything scheduled to get to no. at 8.45. Uh, but uh, there was a, uh, a, a vote that needed to be taken on a grant in Jefferson County. Yes. The uh, two commissioners, Jackson and Kraus, who uh, uh, were not in attendance, said they gave their go-ahead via email to proceed with whatever it was necessary to accomplish to get this grant going. Uh, I've been told subsequently that that might not be the legal and a legitimate well, way to approve something. So this was, uh, it's the um, 
CFIA grant. So it, the the county has two holding cells in the in the bottom of the uh, judiciary building. You know, you need at least two because you got male prisoners, female prisoners, minors, and but it it's too crowded. So the the sheriff's deputies bailiffs they spend a lot of time shuffling people back and forth. It it it, it creates a lot of uh, difficulty. It's it's a safety issue. So uh, they identified a grant, the, the county facilities people, $50,000, they have the space, they could build a new holding cell, so a third holding cell. Um, they got letters of support, uh, you know, the, the, the judges supported it, uh, you know, the prosecuting attorney supported it. Um, the paperwork was completed, um, it was presented at the September 21 meeting, obviously no quorum, the deadline was September 29. So Commissioner Stolfer had, had scheduled us a, 20, a special meeting on the 28th, again, no quorum, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, k- there was expectation that they were not going to show up at this special meeting, Commissioners Kraus and, and Jackson, because they put that out on social media that they weren't going to show up. So the county administrator and the facilities manager were, I mean, they were trying to get this grant. I mean, they had the deadline. It's their job to go out and, you know, and find this money. So they prepared the documents, they asked the, the, for signatures, they asked for a, an email confirmation, they were trying to be helpful. Uh, Nathan Cochran, the deputy uh, prosecuting attorney, uh, she asked, one of the commissioners said, you should check with him, the, the county administrator did, and he said, unfortunately, you know, that would violate the uh, Open Meetings Act, you can't take a vote on a contract uh, via email, um, you'll have to do it at the meeting tonight. And so neither Commissioner Jackson or Kraus showed up at the meeting. There was no quorum. There was no vote. They couldn't, apply, they couldn't submit the paperwork. Even though they had everything ready to go, you know, including a signature from you know, Commissioner Stolifer because he had just signed it in the office, they couldn't legally submit it. And uh, I, did see, I did do a FOIA on that, and you know, I, did get, I saw the email that went out on Monday morning from the county administrator informing all the commissioners that unfortunately – they were not able to apply for the grant. So the next grant window is a year from now. Um, Steve, excuse me. I, th- I think I see two parts to this. One, uh, being able to vote by proxy. And the other part is if there's not a meeting, there's no way to vote it regardless. Yeah. Well, so, but, but, but proxy votes, a proxy vote is a vote you are giving to another individual to vote on your behalf. It's not yeah, an email but, vote. But, exa- but you have to have – a meeting has to be convened in order to do anything like that. A meeting has to be convened Absolutely. before you vote. Yeah, my, my point is yeah, yeah. They, they could not – their their emails were not proxy votes. No, even even no. though a proxy vote is allowed, they would have to have given their vote to another individual yeah, who's right. at the meeting. At, yeah. uh, you know, but or, there's two parts to this. That's correct. the point I'm trying yeah. to make. Make, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Steve, uh, also, uh, this has to be brought out too because among the war of words that have gone out there with, uh, I'm not doing this because of that or whatever. You've also been accused of printing fake news. Well, it was related to you know I reported that the grant uh, application was was not submitted and uh, I was attacked for that, but. Uh, the grant application was was not submitted, and this is, goes back to the difference between what you see in the journalism, what you see on social media. Uh, you know, we report on the facts that we investigate and that we can find. Social media just takes whatever facts are convenient and throws them out there. I mean, there's a lot of times where we don't report on the story because we can't ascertain the facts yet, mm-hmm. so we wait. Social media, you know, the typical headline is breaking. You know, flash, and I think you know, breaking is apropos because that's what this is all about. It's about breaking uh, institutions, breaking procedures, you know, breaking the trust of uh, and people. Finally, before you go, we've kind of been around this without actually getting to it. You mentioned that uh, when it came time to talk about the solar uh, farms, Commissioner Stolifer, the commission president, had to recuse himself. A lot of the undercurrent on here, uh, when you dig underneath what's being thrown about in public. Uh, our accusations against, <clears throat> excuse me, Commissioner Stolifer. Uh, I don't want to say too much on that because I don't want to impugn a person's character, and I certainly don't want to subject this place to a lawsuit uh, because those are easily filed these days, as we learned a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. even if there's no basis in fact. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that is the undercurrent. Why does Commissioner Stolifer need to recuse himself when these discussions are being held? Um I think that's probably a question that it better put to Commissioner Stolifer because it, it, it's a, I actually have not looked at the ethics uh, opinion that that he received on that. Uh, you know, he's a landowner 
in, in the county. Uh, you know, he sits on the planning commission. He was on the planning commission uh, even before he was on the, uh, the county commission. He's now the, the county commission's representative to the planning commission. Um, so presumably, you know, he has property that could be altered in value if, you know, it was allowed to, you know, a specific use was allowed for it. And that, that happens a lot in uh, land use and, and, and zoning. Um, but I, I, as I said, if, if the specifics of it, I think you really need to ask him about that. But it has definitely become uh, personal. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of legitimate political issues related to how solar gets developed. And there's actually litigation uh, ongoing. But again, to, to Mike's point, you have to engage in the process. Uh, the, the stopping the process doesn't necessarily stop um, this construction, I mean, and, and it doesn't appear. I mean, all these things have had been, you know, uh, gone through the process, uh, just like Rockwell was. Yeah. So, you know, but there's a lot of action you follow up afterwards to make sure they're complying with the law, that mm -hmm. they're fulfilling the, re the, the the requirements. But um, you know, this doesn't but seem to be some of the other complaints that. include that though some of this electricity, or actually, someone said all the electricity generated on these farms in Jefferson County is being shipped to Loudoun County. Any fact to, to that in point? Well, we could go back to the, I mean, how nerdy do you want to get on this? Uh, so th there's two There's two sides of electricity. So there's the money side and the physical side, okay? The money side is just like anything else, you know, you have the contract with someone and you send the, the money for that contract. Where they get that, whatever it is, you know, is whether it's corn, whether it's cows, whether it's cars, the physics of it is, it's like a toaster, okay? You, you plug that toaster in, it's gonna take the nearest electron. You plug a solar panel in, it's going to push the, the electron. You plug a toaster and a, and a solar panel into the same wire, that electron is going to go from that solar panel to that toaster. Now, who you're paying to plug that toaster in could be in Charleston, you know, could, it's, it's going to be Potomac uh, Edison, but the actual physical electricity is staying here. You know, it's like when you pour water into a bucket, you know, it's going to come out the, you know, the hole that's closest to, you know, at the bottom of the bucket. It's not going to pop out into the next bucket. And why are they would, saying it's going to Loudoun County? Because that's the, that's the financial uh, uh, flow. It, it's contracted to, uh, you know, the, the demand is for data centers on the grid, okay? But, you know, you're pouring all this electricity into the grid. So it, it's it's not an issue of, you know, there's more, more demand on the grid, you know, and more of the demand is happening elsewhere. So if there's a plant in Virginia that is, let's say it's a natural gas plant and there's a solar plant in here, where that, you can't tell when you're using that electricity where it's coming yeah, from. The, the solar panels are just sending electricity to the grid. If it, yeah. if it, the solar panels aren't there, then the Loudoun County's getting electricity off the grid from somewhere else. It yeah. doesn't really matter where the, the solar panels are. And and to me, this is this is a side note, whether or not uh, Mr. Stolifer recuses himself and, and, and has anything to do with these solar panels, has nothing to do with the other two individuals showing up to do their job. Yeah, because it is a job. They do get paid for this. That, they, yes. They get paid, whether they get show, show up or not, they get paid. Um, final thought, Steve, before we wrap up the segment, anything else that you need to get out? Uh, this. No, I, I think uh, it, it, the way forward is not clear because the uh, so and and the, the the thing that is really that bothers me most is when I talk to the staff, mm -hmm. and you know because I, the commission does have to approve all the new hires, so I think they're up to about eleven vacancies now. There's two in the county admissions office. That, you know the sheriff had a couple of deputies uh, he wanted to hire, EMS has a couple of uh, five people that they wanted to bring on board. So you know we we're, we're having these discussions about. You know, the sheriff and uh, EMS doesn't have enough staff, and yet we're not letting them hire because we're not meeting. So we're not solving the problems here. We're, we're exacerbating the problems. Yes. Steve, how can people subscribe to the West Virginia Independent Observer? Uh, you know, live in Jefferson County. We, we, we'll find you. Uh, you know, we, we, we rotate around where we mail to, and we put it in coffee shops in, in downtown Charlestown, at, uh, at, um, at uh, Black Dog. You know, we, we try to get it around the county so people can find it. But, yeah, just pick up a newspaper and read it. Don't even need me my newspaper. Just pick up a newspaper and read it and find out what's going on. Yours comes out weekly. What day monthly, is it? Monthly. Monthly. We're, we're, we're once a month because it, it takes a while to think about these things. <laughs> <laughs> when, when does it usually come out? Just before the beginning of the month. Very good. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.